welcome everyone back to the channel and if you're new here, welcome. In this video, we are going to be explaining the concepts of stress, strain, and the modulus of elasticity. What exactly are these measurements and how are they used in the field of engineering? We know from Newton's second law of motion that force equals mass times acceleration. And forces help us with a lot of things. We can analyze projectile motion, or we can analyze the forces on an inclined plane, such as friction and weight. And we can even determine how much force is required to shoot a rocket into outer space. But instead of focusing on complex systems like rockets, let's narrow our focus to how forces affect the actual materials themselves. This is where the idea of stress comes into play. To demonstrate, let's take a piece of steel with a cross-sectional area of 10 inches squared and apply a load of 100 pounds. Stress is defined as the ratio of the applied force to the cross-sectional area. Here, the experienced compressive stress is 100 pounds per 10 square inches, or 10 psi. Stress varies directly with the applied load and indirectly with the cross-sectional area. To illustrate this, another beam with a cross-sectional area of 4 inches squared and an applied load of 80 pounds shows that the experienced stress is 20 psi, which is twice as much as the previous value. This is critical because materials fail based on the experienced stress in the material. They don't fail based on how small or large the applied force is. It depends on both the force and the material configuration. Another important measurement we take in engineering is called strain. Let's have another example here with, let's say, a block of steel. And this block of steel is going to start at an initial length. And after we apply a force to the material, it's going to elongate to a final length. The change in length, or delta L, can be used to actually determine the strain in the material. Strain, which is commonly represented by the symbol epsilon, is defined as the change in length or delta L divided by the initial length. This value gives you sort of a percentage of elongation in the material due to an applied force. So now we know that applying a force to a material causes stress and stress causes strain or deformation. But how do we go about figuring out exactly how much stress causes how much strain? This is where the idea of the tensile test comes into play. The tensile test involves taking a known material and applying a known force to measure strain. This is conducted in a lab setting, so these measurements tend to be accurate. Since we know the force, we can plot exactly how much strain is occurring as a result of stress. The test ends when the material breaks. Let's take a closer look at this curve. The first region is called the elastic or linear region. Deformation here is not permanent, meaning that the material will snap back to its original form once the load is removed. Stress and strain are related by a constant known as Young's modulus, which is the slope of the linear region. Young's modulus can give you an exact relationship between any value of stress and strain, allowing you to plan how much strain is allowed for the applied force. The end of the elastic region is the yield strength. Past this level of stress, we encounter the plastic region, where any deformation here will be permanent. The ultimate tensile strength is where the material begins to fracture. The test ends when the material simply cannot withstand any more stress and breaks. This test applies to most materials, and the most general guideline is that if you know where the ultimate tensile strength of a material is, and you know your design will stress past this limit, choose a different material. So now you know what stress in a material is. Stress is experience when a material is subject to a force. The material reacts to this stress by deforming, which is a value that we measure as strain. We can relate stress and strain of a material using the tensile test. The tensile test also gives us a way to determine when a material will fail based on a certain loading condition. The strength of the material is incredibly important to know because it's very helpful to know when your design might fail based on certain loading conditions. Keep in mind this video was a very, very basic introduction to the concepts of stress, strain, and the tensile test. In reality, it gets a lot more complicated because there's never one directional stress or strain in a system, or at least most of the time there's not. Once you get into two-dimensional strain and three-dimensional strain, and then you have all sorts of things like torsion and bending stress. There's a lot of different types of stress and strain, but this video covers the very fundamentals of how everything starts in it. 
I hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks everyone for watching and stay tuned for more videos.